Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, I'm not saying that back to you. Sorry, buddy. I think it's going. There we go. We're on. All right. So happy Valentine's Day. I'm not saying it to you. I'm saying it to everyone else that uh, we love with all our hearts. Yeah, you're right. I'm not your Valentine's. Don't get it twisted. Uh, shout out there, to the Army is your Valentine. The Army? Oh, the Combat Army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out to all the uh, happy uh, re- relationship or people in relationships out there, happy couples. Uh, shout out to the Combat Army. There we happy go. Happy Family good. Day. Happy Family Day. I think it's uh, President's Day or something in the States, so happy long weekend. All right. We all get a long weekend. It's good. That's why we got to get this out. Uh, there's not much going on for fights. I mean, they're, I mean, they're decent main events, but this shouldn't yeah. have been a pay-per-view. But let's talk about the, the Calmly fight first. Yeah, okay. So, um, you know, you guys know how excited we were about Joe Smith fighting for his, uh, getting a second shot at a world title. Unfortunately, his opponent, Vlasov, came over from Russia, was doing his quarantine at the MGM, and uh, he came down with a positive test for COVID. So that fight got scrapped, and they elevated Richard Comey, former IBF champion, lightweight champion, versus Jackson Marinez, who is, should be undefeated. He outboxed uh, Roley badly last year and got completely robbed. I think he won every round. And it was just a good fight. It was a crossroads fight. Is Comey still world class, or is uh, Mar- Marinez going to be the next guy, the dark horse in the division? And I honestly thought Marinez was going to outbox him. But did you catch the highlights? Did you see what happened? I know uh, Comey won the six. I did see the last... Uh... The last stoppage. Yeah, man. Comey just, he didn't care. He got knocked out in his last fight. He just said, short-term memory. I'm still going forward. I'm still going to put the pressure on. He got inside Marinez and made, because he's the bigger guy, he Mm -hmm. made the skill differential. He took away the guy's skills. You can't box when somebody's on your chest. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, I don't know. It's a midget division, right? 135. I don't know. Is that a midget division? Okay, no. 125 is when we get to midgets. Uh, so we're good. We're good. I didn't know for sure. It's kind of tough. Kome gets a huge knockout. Um, early contender for boxing knockout of the year. Just flatten the men. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to see him fight Nakatani next. Nakatani's not a big name, but he's had, he gave Teofimo Lopez his hardest fight. Harder yeah. fight than Lomachenko gave him. And he's coming off of a big win against... Uh, I can't remember the man's name, but a Puerto Rican gold medalist in the Olympics. He was a highly touted prospect coming out of the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, Nakatani could be a good fight. It'd be a war. But Marin, he is, he's on a two-fight lose streak, which kind of sucks because he really should only have that one loss. It's going to put him down in the queue, which is unfortunate, but he's still a really good fighter. Yeah, well, he'll he'll win a fight against a can. He'll be back. Yeah, I'd like to see him back on ESPN or Showtime, definitely. For sure, for sure. Uh, we we're going to talk about first, want to talk about Bellator signing with Showtime. Yeah. So first of all, we have a special guest that's going to come on and break down the the tournament with us. We're not going to announce that yet, but uh, stay tuned. We're, we're working on it. It looks like it's pretty much uh, 99% going to happen. What do you think? Tell me your thoughts first on the on the Showtime Grand Prix. The ma- I'm, I'm not really like, I, I feel like they should have uh, warmed up. Well, they shouldn't have started with you all Romero versus Anthony Johnson. I thought that was a big, I think they could have made more money business wise too. And they were likely to win the fights and fight anyway. Uh, I, I don't think they should have started them with each other, but seeing Machida over some other light heavyweights in the division was kind of surprising to me. I don't think he has any business being in there. Uh, neither does Ryan Bader right now. I mean, there should be other, maybe Ryan Bader, I guess, but He's a heavyweight champion. Now he's going to hold up the division. Right. Okay, so people are saying Ryan Bader shouldn't be in there because he's a heavyweight champion. I'm fine with Bader being in there as a heavyweight champion as long as they make an interim belt. This guy hasn't fought in heavyweight division for like 18 months or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then, but because they're putting in a heavyweight champion, they should be able to put the middleweight champion, who's a former strike force light heavyweight champion, Gegard Mousasi, who in my opinion – would be the favorite to win this whole thing besides Vadim Nemkov? Uh, I think Vadim might win it all, but I do. I, I see Rumble tearing through everyone. For some reason, I know he's been off for a while, but we'll see. Dude, I don't think he's going to get past Yoel Romero. You know this. And 
on the note of you saying you don't like that fight being made first, I think they had to do it first. Because if we had this tournament and they were both in this tournament, and for some reason one of them lost and we didn't get that fight, how upset would you be? It's going to be pretty upset seeing Yoel Romero have four losses in a row, though. Why is why are you assuming he's gonna get knocked out? Like, or why, why do you think he's gonna lose? I just don't think I think Romero is horrible at light heavyweight. He never did so well. Um, this is a different division. This is twenty pounds more. These are bigger boys. I know he's a big boy, but um, it'll be a good fight. It'll be a good fight for how long it lasts. Talk. Let's just not forget that uh, um, Rumble Johnson is a former welterweight, and there's no time in history Joel Romero would have ever made welterweight. So just keep that in mind. But uh, who's the bigger man? Oh, yeah, of course, Rumble. But he also had needles in his ass for a couple of years. That's true. Uh, but all I'm saying is a loss to Rumble is going to hurt Romero a lot. Right, right. So, uh, so last point I'm going to make on this. No disrespect to the ACA champion coming over, Yag Shemurdov. I think I'm pronouncing that right. But Gegard Busasi should be in this tournament. If you're going to have him beat up welterweights like Douglas Lima and Rory McDonald, you got to make him go up and fight the bigger guys himself as well. And I'm sure he wanted it. I don't know why Scott Coker wouldn't do it. It doesn't make sense, especially when you have a heavyweight champion holding up the division already. Yes, they guess they didn't want that many divisions on he- being held. But, yeah. So what are your thoughts on Showtime with Bellator? I do like the Friday nights. Yep, I like that. I uh, It's good. kind of spreads out the schedule. We got one championship. It's going to be starting in April on Wednesdays, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then we'll have... Uh, Bellator on Fridays, UFC boxing on Saturdays mostly. I like that. I think they kind of missed on some of the announcements, like the Juan Archuleta versus Sergio Pettis. They really should have done the Horiguchi fight. Um, I think they should have announced more fights than just the main events. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but we're I almost they, into March. You got to realize, why is it that all these companies are acting like this is a season? Like they should have had fights in January. It's never been like this. Like I, I, I want to see fights happen at the beginning of the year i want to have them scheduled i don't like the way it was set up yeah so january february march so they missed the first quarter of the year the first events are in april they're missing four months yeah uh it's tough it's especially when you have guys like douglas lima that want to fight like three or four times this year he said on morning combat they got to get it going they have to get this shit going we should have if they want to do the Showtime announcement, that's fine. But they should have had fights still on DAZN or CBS, whatever they're doing, in the meantime, and then moved over to Showtime. Or let their fighters fight somewhere else. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, uh, did you want to start off with uh, post-recap of UFC 258? Yeah, we'll do that. Part of um, the year. So, yeah, car, best pay-per-view of all time. Uh, I was at to, work, and I seen Gillian go pulled out. I was pretty upset that or that hurt, and I'm just like, this card's just horrible. One of the only fights that we are actually looking forward to, uh, shout out to the Canadian Gillian Roberts. Um, I don't know, you didn't think she was going to win. I thought she was going to win, so maybe it was a blessing in disguise. She doesn't have to go take that fight. But uh, anyways, we had um, Ricky Simon. Got a, he's on a two-fight win streak now. Three. Three? Yeah. Oh, he has to double-check my knowledge. You're talking who, to the, who, uh, the king of MMA. Uh, he beat Ray Borg, and he just beat Brian Keller. Who else? He beat someone before that. I just can't remember exactly. Let's see, guys, who's right. Ray Borg, uh, Guatano, Perello, and Brian Keller. Yeah, you're right. So when it comes to boxing, talk to this guy. When it comes to MMA, talk to me. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, we did have a middle fight. We had Ian Hynek. Versus, who's kind of an overrated middleweight. I mean, he's 3-3 three and three now in the UFC. He kind of got ranked quick for some reason because he had a win over Antonio, uh, who's ranked in the 15 at the time. Uh, but the guy is decent, but I don't think he's as big as a win. Like, it's good to see Kelvin Gaslam, who we fought, get a win. I, I'm glad that happened. Like, the guy needed it bad. But uh, against Ian Hynek is nothing to – I don't know why he was ranked. So Ian was saying this is 2021 is the year he's going to put the division on notice. I don't know, man. What do you do with him now? He was ranked 15th coming into this. Um, he's kind of a win-lose kind of guy. He said this was going to be his year. Honestly, I feel like you could see him just walking away from the sport because at this point, I don't see him ever cracking the top 10. No, like that's what I mean. He got his ranking too without even that hard of work, in my opinion, uh, for being 3-3 three and three and still ranked 
and he beat he hasn't beat anyone too special. Um, but I would like to. I just don't understand how he got the ranking. I, I'm just happy that Kelvin Gaslam got some wins or is back in the win column, and I would like to see him fight the winner of Kevin Holland versus uh, uh, Garrett Brunson. Yeah, was it a dominant win? I didn't catch that fight. Did uh, Kelvin it was win? Like, it was probably like 29-28. I didn't get to see too much of it. So Okay. Well, um, it's good to see Kelvin get a win. Hopefully he gets another big fight. We'll see what happens. But uh, I still think he should be at welterweight. Anyways, rolling on, we have Macy, the future barber, taking on Alexa Grasso. The past. Macy's the never was. In her first fight back since the knee injury against uh, Roxanne Matafari. It was a close fight. I had it uh, 2-1 for Alexa, but I thought that first round could have gone either way. Really? You're like the only person saying that. I mean, I don't really know what... Like, the second round was definitely Grasso. The third round was definitely Barber. The first round was close. I think they both landed, like, somewhere around, like, 15 significant strikes each or something. It was a close round. I mean, were you counting the shadow boxing of... Uh... Dude, that was that was corny, man. That was not a good look. So, anyway... Macy Barber's overrated. She needs to go. I don't even think she should be in the UFC right now. Uh, but she has a bad attitude. She's Dana White's still high on her horse about her. He's like he's only 22, and I was thinking in my head, you said what about Sage Sage Northcutt? You didn't give him time, and he was actually winning fights. Um, Dude, she's way better than um, Chase Hooper. Way better. Yeah, but she, Chase Hooper shouldn't be there either. No, but if we're talking about people that shouldn't be there, Macy Barber's fighting, like, top opponents. Chase Hooper's fighting people that shouldn't even be in the UFC, and he's losing. Well, he's pulling out a tricks out of his ass, but, um, like, his last fight, he was getting beat up. But this isn't the Chase Hooper show. We're giving him too much respect on the show. Um, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of Macy Barber's tactics, that's all. She's not a two-fight skid. Um... But she didn't get stopped by Roxanne, though, right? She's lost decision. No. Yeah. Yeah, so her stock is it's taken a bit of a hit because she was saying she wanted to be the youngest champion in UFC history. Obviously not going to happen. But uh, I still think she's in 125 is a weak division. She'll – one big win and she's back in the top five. Yeah, but one loss can hurt her now. I think this loss hurt her. Like she's, like, it's it's a weak division. She's gonna drop out of the top ten, obviously, because Grasso is fifteen. But uh, it's just the women's 125 division is just weak. It's just what it is. I would like to see her fight. Um, crap, who's the girl who wears a country hat, blonde hair? Uh, she follow on yeah. Murphy. <sighs> what is what is that girl's name? Um, I can't remember her name, but I know what you're talking about. I wouldn't mind seeing her fight Lauren Murphy, to be honest. Really? It's just. Well, Lauren Murphy's going to have to have another fight. And Macy it's Barber's going to be JoJo versus fight. Lauren Murphy. Yeah. That, uh, no, I'm thinking I heard Calderwood got called out by. Uh, so, no, Macy Barber wanted Joanne Calderwood if she yeah. won this fight. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that makes sense. But I, would, I, I just think that for Murphy's sake, catch Macy Barber when she's on a two fight skid. She's 22 before she gets better. Um, and Lauren Murphy's pushing 40 years old, so she's going to have to be active and fight these young people before they get better. I think you're. I think the perfect fight right now for Macy Barber would to give her the girl that uh, fought Lauren Murphy last on short notice, uh, Verna. Is she still in the UFC? She, she got signed, like, the day before the fight. Yeah, but she's going to have another fight. Yeah. All right, so rolling on to the main event, uh, Kamaru Usman versus Gilbert Burns. Wow. Wow. Uh, did you watch it? Yeah, man, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. Did you think that Usman was going to get stopped? Yeah, I thought he was going to get knocked out, but he did this. So if you guys don't know what we're talking about, the first round, Gilbert Burns came out and dropped him, I think, twice. Mm-hmm. And he was composed, the, though. The second time he dropped him was serious. He dropped him with a hard right hand, and then um, he Gilbert threw a kick, I believe, lost his step, and uh, ended up on his back. And Usman played it smart. He stood over Gilbert and made him just kind of hold that position until he regained his marbles. And it kind of sucked because I thought Gilbert could have finished him if the if Herb had stood them up. But smart play by Usman. Real smart. Veteran move. It was good to see a champion face adversity for once, though. Yeah. I mean, if you, similar to the Colby fight, Burns was hitting him with the same shots, the double jab right hand with some kicks behind. But Burns' power is different. Burns' power is different than Colby's. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'd like to see this fight happen again during, down the road, honestly. 
No, I don't think so. I, I think Colby uh, – sorry, this is the best we're ever going to see Gilbert Burns. I don't know if he's going to get to this level again. Maybe, maybe not. But Usman is just continually getting better. His striking was so much better since the Colby fight in this fight. Oh, for sure. It's a different level, for sure. That's why I didn't think he was going to win. I thought it was going to be a pretty much a stand-up fight because I didn't think he was going to try and take down Burns. And I didn't think Burns would be able to take him down, which he wasn't. He, he missed all three attempts. I just I thought that the the difference in um, technique I thought Burns is a better striker but Usman's jab looked nasty man. Yeah, there's just not many people who could compete with uh, him right now. It looks like we're going to get Jorge Masvidal next. I, w- I really want the Colby rematch. I would love the Colby rematch. Well, it looks like we're getting Leon versus Colby. Right, but um, what about uh, Douglas Lima? I, I th- Douglas Lima is the only guy that's at that level that's a bigger welterweight than Kamara Usman. Size, yeah, but we, I don't know. I, I don't want to talk about Douglas Lima right now because he he needs to get on his high horse and go at least defend him on Bellator, get some hype around him again. Yeah, yeah. There's a, He's got actually a tough fight, apparently. They're going to put him up against this undefeated guy, just beat Logan Storley. I can't, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's a, a Russian fighter. Really solid guy. Anyways. Um, we, got some fight, we got some fights this weekend. Yeah, rolling on. To I don't the, understand why they keep putting Curtis Blades in main events. Like people just don't like him. I mean, it's because he's he's a high ranked guy, man. He's got a good record, and he's friggin' big. He's a heavyweight. And he, yeah, yeah. Hey, Phil Haas is back. I think he opens up the main card. That's solid. Always good to see Phil Haas. Yeah. Um, Alexi Ola. I think hopefully he uh, chokes somebody out. There is a fight after that that I want to see. Uh, Charles Rosa, Derek Minor. No, that's a decent uh, fight though. Caitlin Vieira, Yana Kutskaya. I like that fight. That's it. That's the whole main card. Are you serious? That's the main card. And then you got the main event. All right, this card is a whole next day. <laughs> I'll go to the prelims. Let me see something. If uh, if if that's where it is. Hold on a sec. What do we got here? Andre Arlovski, Tom Aspinall, that's the fight. That's the fight. That's the opener of the main. It's on the prelims. It's the main event of the prelims. Wow. Okay, that's the fight I was looking forward to. Anyway, that's a, that fight excites me more, even though Aspinall is probably going to knock him out. I got Aspinall by second-round knockout. Yeah, Aspinall, if you guys don't know, trains with Tyson Fury. He's got good hands. He's, He's a bit big, undersized. Eh? Huh? He's big. Uh, is he? He's only like 6'2", 6'3". He's not that big. Maybe the last person I seen him fight against, he was bigger. But he's young. He's uh, he's got that good British boxing background. Arlovski's gonna stand up with him, and I honestly think uh, Arlovski's gonna get knocked out in the second round. Yeah. When we and we've never seen Arlovski knocked out before. Yeah, it's never happened. With his uh, 19 losses, we've never seen it once. Oh, I think 17 of them are by knockout. Something like that, dude. 30 and 19. But he's fought everyone. Literally everyone. Isn't he, can you stop dropping your camera, dude? Holy. Uh, it, uh, yeah. He's on, a, he's on a win streak right now. Yeah, two he, streak. He's he three in his last uh, four. He's on a little resurgence. Tanner Boser and Felipe Linz, who are both like guys who are trying to push as the next guy to have, just beat Arlovski. So they might... Uh, they might. We never know. We never know. It's, it, I would like Arlovski to win, but I think Tom wins second round knockout. Oh, 100 percent. I got. I'm going for uh, Arlovski all day. But uh, yeah, tough fight for him. He's like 46 years old now or something. Hopefully he gets it done. But yeah, main event. Curtis Blades is taking on Derek Lewis. I think this outside of the fact Derek Lewis pulling a Harold Mary shot like he did against Volkov, he's just going to get wrestled for the for five rounds. It's going to be boring. It's going to be bad, yeah. Like, I'm just not excited for this fight. I'd like to see Derek Lewis win with a shot. He does have those explosive, uh, like, when he gets taken down, he'll, like, take a gas of air. It's like he gets some, like, fire, uh, like, he gets, like, a big fart, and it kind of lifts him off off the canvas. You know those moments with Derek Lewis? He gets up there, and he just starts slugging. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go on a win. I'm going to say Derek Lewis by uh, first-round knockout. Really? I'm going to call it. Even though my, my brain's telling me not to, I just I don't want Blades to win this fight. I really don't. Blades is so chinny. Is he? I so think he got knocked so. he gets by, rocked a lot. Because he got knocked out by Francis he, twice. He's chinny. He's been he's been rocked quite a bit though. Like he got rocked by Volkov. He got rocked by Mark Hunt pretty bad. 
Yeah, that's true. But he pulls it out. He stays in there. I guess. I would like to see Derek Lewis win, but I got third round submission. Yeah, I can see that. Um, okay, and then on the boxing side this weekend, we got top rank is doing Miguel Burchelt taking on Oscar Valdez. Two undefeated Mexicans. I think they're fighting at 130 pounds. Should be a very competitive fight. I think Burchelt is a slight, weight. I think Burchelt's a slight favorite, but uh, I'm calling upset. I think uh, Valdez has looked a lot better with his uh, since he's gone over to the Canelo team and training with Eddie Reynoso and the boys. He's he's good. He can fight on the inside. He's got a decent boxing background. He came from the, Olymp- the Olympics. I think Valdez gets it done. I can't make a prediction because I haven't watched the Dwarfs yet, but I'll check it out. Definitely check that one out. It should be on before the main event of Blades versus Lewis. And before we go, a uh, shout out to Stefan Struve, who just retired today. Did he? Yeah, about an hour ago. Is this like his third time retiring or what? I know. He, 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 I don't get it. He retires like, I've seen this guy retire how many times now? Probably three times. Yeah. Um, quick He's shout like out. 32. He's taking too much damage, way too much. For sure, for sure. But we, uh, but I think that's everything for this today. Uh, as a quick shout out to Gina Carano. I think she was. Uh, I don't think she should have lost her job for what she did. I'm not going to get into it. It's political. But uh, go look at that situation. Shout out to Gina Carano. And we're out. We're out.